Hello everybody, this is Carmichael the Cat, and welcome to your fifth Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be going over tables. So, a table in Lua is kind of like an array in C++, but it's also kind of like a vector, a stack, a map, a queue, or any other kind of container class in C++ or Java or C Sharp or any language. We kind of went over this in the first tutorial or second tutorial when we went over variables. But we'll be going over to tables in a little more depth in this tutorial. But there will be a lot more we can do with tables after this tutorial. It's just too much for one tutorial. So let's say table 1 is equal to, and then we have open and close square brackets. And then we put the values that will be stored in this table in the curly brackets. So we'll do 3, hello, oh. Um, hello and true. So now if we want to output these values, we'll do print table one and for now we'll do position one. So this is just like declaring an array in uh, C, C or C++. We do table one at position one. The difference is that in Lua tables start with 1 instead of 0. So table 1 at position 1 this will output 3. So position 1 in the container here and position 2 will output hello and position 3 will output true. So right now the variables in this table are what, what are called anonymous variables. So that means that they have no name, they're just a position in the table. But we can give them names, so we'll say int equals 3, string 1 equals hello, and bool equals true. So now table 1 at position 3 doesn't exist anymore because these now have names. What we need to do is table one at int. Oh no, we need to do we need to give it a string. So table one at int equals three. Table one at string one equals hello. And table one at bool equals true. So these now have key what are called key value pairs and if we want to loop through all the values in this table, we use a special kind of for loop. It's called the generic for loop. Um, there will be a tutorial just on this, but for now, just copy this. So we'll do for k comma v v in pairs. It's a function, and we pass in table one. Do, and then we have end here. So now we do print k comma v. So now bool true int three string one hello. So that this is how you loop through a table that does not have anonymous values. So you can't just use a num. It's called the numeric for loop in Lua. With that's just for i equals zero. I is less than. 3i++ plus plus, or you don't have to do that in Lua. So you can't loop through it with a numeric for loop as you saw if we just try to do table 1 at position 1. Uh, it says nil here which means it doesn't work. So this is the way you loop through a table that has keys. So right now this table is the equivalent of a map in C++ because it has a key and a value. Before it was an array and we can make it a vector or a stack using meta tables which we will get into later. So you can also modify the values in a table the same way. So we can get rid of this and this doesn't have to be print anymore. So table 1 at position int is equal to 4. And actually we shouldn't have gotten rid of that. 4k comma v in pairs 
table one do print k comma v end and again we'll get into this kind of for loop later just copy it copy it down for now so now we see here int is four. Oh, and another thing that I forgot to go into is you can see here in the output that the order is bool, bool, int, and string, but the order up here is int, string, and bool. So tables in Lua don't have any order uh, in the meta tables and table library tutorial. I'll go into how you give tables order, but for now they don't have any order. So it will it won't be random like once it will always be bool int string but they won't it won't be in the order that you put it in in the t when you declare the table so we can do this for all the all the different values we can set string 1 to 4 so now it says string 1 is 4 so there's only one more thing we have to go over in this tutorial and it's memory management so for now we just have very small tables so this shouldn't make a difference but if you get into bigger Lua programs that have tables that take up more memory you should know how to get rid of that memory so Lua has a garbage collector which if you've programmed in Java or C sharp you know what that is it basically just comes and frees up any, un any unused memory that the program's taken and gives it back to the computer. So, to tell Lua that a table can be collect garbage collected and given back to the computer, you just set table one to nil. So that's one use of nil in our program. So now, table one doesn't exist anymore. There's no references to it. So the garbage collector will come and pick it up. But if we set table two to table one this is how you copy a table then table one will be gone but table two will still have the same values or will still be a reference to the, what was table one and the garbage collector will know not to pick it up so that's how you free up tables and make references to tables and i think that's all for this tutorial in the next tutorial, I think we will actually be able to make that text game that I promised we'd do, I think, two tutorials ago. So, see you in the next tutorial.